Jeff, it's Brother Jason here at First Baptist Nederland. How are things in Lumberton, North Carolina today? Brother, it is great to see you, great to talk to you. And um, it's, um, things are, things are pretty bad, uh, quite frankly. Um, one of the things I've noticed with this hurricane more than with Hurricane Matthew, you know, you guys are experts down there in hurricanes. <laughs> You've had to face your share of them. And, um, what I've noticed with my people in my church this time, that's different than Matthew. With Matthew, everybody, you, know, you go through the grieving, you go through the assessing yeah. of what you've lost, and you kind of come to this point where you just kind of pull yourself up, you begin to rely on God, and you, you put your hand to the task, and you get to work, and you do what you got to do. Yep. Well, with this happening again within two years, I just see a lot of despair Yeah. in the eyes of my people. A lot of them are just in a malaise. Uh, I was just in a house this morning where the family is it's really – just a dear family that connected with our church and I went and spoke with them and just checking how their house is and how things are going and we've been able to start some of the mud out process we've got the insulation stuff out of their crawl space but the, the wife is she's just in a fog and yeah. she says I know I need to be doing things she said but I just can't find the strength to do it and, and one of the problems is people are having some really big questions about what does this mean for their home and their mortgage and you know, they recovered from one hurricane and really some of them had to go in debt a lot. Wow. Uh, some of them were dropped by their insurance. And there's some huge questions about can we stay in this community or should we just, just take our losses and leave? I'm beginning to see a little bit of glimmer of hope here and there. Uh, of course, our community, the roads are back open. Our ma major corridors are open. Uh, restaurants are opening back up. Uh, and Compared to Matthew, it's not been as bad. With Matthew, we lost water for weeks. And oh, that was wow. Really, really bad. This time, they were able to protect the, the water plant and keep it up and going so we didn't lose water. Um, the flooding this time was much more widespread. It was much further beyond Lumberton. With Matthew, we were kind of the central focus of the damage, but this storm was so huge and sure. just unrelenting. Uh, the damage is very far and, and very wide. But uh, I think... I'm hoping within the next few weeks uh, we're going to start seeing some more glimmer of hope. The shelters hopefully are going to be um, – we've got still got about 400 people in shelters. Yeah. Um, so th things are, are better, but it's, it's going to be a while on recovery of this one. Oh, boy, it's, a, it, it's going to be tough. It, it's tough to ride out and uh, suffer any of these storms. Uh, but this mm -hmm. one, because it was so widespread, uh, it, it's going to be difficult for a lot of people. Now, yes. the reason that we got connected was uh, – after Hurricane Harvey, people from Lumberton, North Carolina, and people specifically from Hyde Park, Hyde Park Baptist, where you pastor, uh, were here at our facilities, and they saw what was going on, and, and uh, y'all were very gracious and generous and provided some, some aid for our, our community down here, and we're, we're seeking to do the same there. Uh, but could you tell us a little bit right now about uh, the kind of work that's going on through y'all's church, Hyde Park Baptist in Lumberton? Yeah, well, if you were on our campus, it would look very familiar to what you yep. saw there. Uh, Baptist men are set up uh, in our parking lot. We've been feeding uh, from 11 to 1, 4 to 6 mm -hmm. every day. Sounds familiar. We, yeah, so I'm sure it does. <laughs> uh, it looks very familiar to uh, 2016, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Uh, at the peak, we were doing 18,000 meals a day. Uh, right now, we're down around probably 10,000, 9 to 10,000 yeah. meals a day. It's beginning to, uh, it's sloping down quite a bit now, which we, we kind of expected. Uh, we also have the recovery teams here on site that are going out every day and doing the mud outs and tree sure. removal and, and all of that. Not sure what the time span looks like or time frame as far as how long they're going to be here on our site. Uh, of course, we've, we've, we have an open-ended agreement with Baptist men because for us, uh, Baptist men coming on our side is a tremendous blessing for us. We knew as this storm was just battering our community, I, I was really hoping that Baptist men would come back. Sure. And the reason for that is, is because of what happened in 2016 with Hurricane Matthew, we knew this community was going to be coming to us. Mm -hmm. And we knew we were going to have to be prepared either with Baptist men or without. It's just a lot more effective with Baptist men because of their logistics and the way they do things That's right. to be able to do what we need to do. Because it, it, it would be near impossible for us to provide the kind of meal support that they can. So we were, we were very blessed to have them back on our side. Sure. 
Man, I tell you what, I and uh, I, I hate that you're having to relive this only two years after having gone through it with Hurricane Matthew. Um, yeah, we're we're, we're still we're, we're still just kind of recovering from that, that feeding and disaster recovery phase from um, from last year ourselves. That's for sure. But Jeff, uh, tell us how can we pray for you and your congregation and your community this weekend as we gather together for worship. Give you a couple of uh, a couple of praises first, and things that I've seen that that's just just beautiful. Uh, first of all, one of the things we we learned from Matthew that we did differently with this hurricane response is when we did Matthew. One of the things that always concerned me was uh, Robinson County is a big county. People mm-hmm. are spread out outside of Lumberton City. It's it's pretty much a very rural farming community. Lots of corn, soybeans, tobacco. And there's little pockets of communities all around the county. And I was always concerned about those people out there not being able to get to our campus to get the resources that we had here. So what we did differently this time is we we identified churches in those areas uh, that were hard hit. uh, And we were able to get them escorted to our campus, Mm -hmm. either by police or National Guard, uh, whenever the roads were open, of course. And we were able to supply them with the food. They took the food to their campus and then served their communities with the food that Baptist Men was providing. Mm-hmm. And what that what that did is it, it did several things. First of all, it took the focus off of us. Sure. Uh, I wanted it to be more on the on the churches in our area rather than on us. Secondly, it was connecting right where the people were hurting. Sure. And third, it allowed those churches to minister to their communities directly. And as a result, we've seen several salvations Amen. out on these satellite campuses. And that has just been a blessing. And, and one of the, the additional blessing of that is seeing those pastors come with their church vans with some volunteers and us filling that van full of food. And those guys are just beaming from ear to ear because they didn't have the capacity to cook that amount of food. Yeah. And being able to prepare it for them and them be able to serve it was just, just a real blessing for those churches. Uh, we've been able to see some salvations here on our site uh, through uh, the prayer stations as the cars would yeah. come through. So for that, we are, we are very grateful. And I'm grateful for a, for a group of volunteers who, yes, we're cooking food, and yes, we're tearing out insulation and sheetrock, but they're keeping the focus on the main thing, the main thing is the gospel. Yeah. And I'm thankful for, for men and women who are able to do that. As far as prayer requests, one of the prayer requests I've got, as, as you know and as you experienced, you had... I know you had Red Cross uh, folks on your campus, and we do as well. And mm-hmm. we're glad that they're here. We're glad that they're serving. But I've I've begun to realize that uh, some of the Red Cross folks that we have serving here don't know Jesus. And uh, we've been able to have some really good conversations with some of the Red Cross folks about what it means to follow Christ. So I think our first prayer request would be that we could be effective uh, mm-hmm. with just the people that God's brought to our doorstep, sure. not just through the feeding line, but through these other organizations such as FEMA and Red Cross who are who are here on this side as well, that we could represent Christ well and have an opportunity to have a conversation with them about why we do what we do. Sure, We know why the Red Cross does what they do, and we know why FEMA does what they do. Absolutely. They really need to know why, why we do what we do. It's not about handing a bag of food as much as it is seeing their life changed That's right. through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So about, that would be our prayer request that I would have is that is that we can uh, touch these groups that are coming in, uh, either government organizations or otherwise, who don't know Jesus, and we can represent Christ well in those That's situations. Right. Secondly, with my church, um, just the despair that I yeah. see, and I know it's going to take some time, and, and I know that um, the hurt that I see in my folks' eyes, and they, they have some big questions. I mean, those, those big theological questions right why would god allow this to happen uh, two times in a row why am i losing my house yep. i mean those are big questions and, and and quite frankly you know none of us really have those answers that's and, right and like i told my folks this past sunday even if we had all those questions answered does that doesn't change the fact that we've got to go through this but what i don't want to have happen with my people here at the church is that they become to get angry and maybe even bitter sure uh, and we know that Satan can can work uh, in our hearts and minds to turn us uh, towards bitterness and anger towards God because of what's been lost. So my, my prayer request in that respect is that for these disciples of Christ here at Hyde Park, that uh, through this they would see Romans 8.28 mm. uh, clearly playing out in front of their eyes that God has the ability to take all things and turn them around for good and for his glory. And so right. that will be the second and third and final is that we would simply just persevere. 
Sure. That is the congregation, as a staff. I have I have other staff here, and they're all. I have one staff member, my children's ministry director. Her name's Kelly. She had significant damage on her house, and um, my student pastor, he had damage on his house. Uh, Matthew, none of her staff were affected much, but uh, just that we as a staff could continue to persevere, and our church can continue to persevere, continue to do the ministry that God's put in front of us, and do it faithfully. That'd be great. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a long journey, and we we are committed to to doing it. But there are some days that get really long, <clears throat> and and we've got we've got to keep keep being faithful. Well, God bless you, brother, and uh, just know that we're going to be praying as we put together a little gift for you, and uh, look forward to uh, delivering that personally uh, to uh, Lumberton, North Carolina. Well, let me let me uh, let me say that I am just just blown away. Uh, I'm so grateful for your generosity. I'm so grateful that. Um, that you guys thought of us and, and wanted to do this for us. And, and every single dime of this is going to go to help get people back in their homes. And as you know, you've been through it. Yep. You, you see, you see the, the impact that it can make, but um, the, the goal of this is to get people back in their homes and, and to share the, the good news of the gospel with every single person that we can. So from the deepest, deepest part of my heart, I want to thank you uh, for your, for your, generosity and for your grace and, and just for your the, the beauty of, of giving such a sacrificial gift you know a lot of things can be said about the church and you know we get a lot of things wrong and we drop the ball but i'm telling you what's happening right here with you and i and your church and my church and the way we've been able to help each other through this this is the beauty of the body of christ at that's work. right and, and and no matter where i go and no matter what i do i'm not going to forget uh, the, this moment in time where we've been able to help each other along on this journey that's right. Well, two brothers uh, united through disaster relief. Uh, yes. You know, that's a that's a pretty good picture of uh, what it means to be a Baptist, a Christian, yes. and uh, we need to see more churches doing this very thing, very same thing. Amen. I agree with that. Amen.